So there I was, a newly promoted manager in a consulting firm on my first solo business development sales call. Actually, not solo. My boss was with me for moral support, but I didn't really need it. I had an MBA from Harvard. I was well-versed in all the practice areas and service offerings that, we, that our small firm had to, had to offer. I didn't really need any help. This lead meeting was with a, uh, an industrial products company. We had a lot of experience in that. This meeting was going to go pretty well. Now, you know how these things go. We're, we, we introduce each other. We pour some coffee. You exchange the business cards. You sit down, have a little bit of idle chit-chat, and then the moment happens. Uh, the client leans into me, puts his arms on the table, and says, tell me, Mr. Green, what experience do you have doing marketing studies for industrial consumables? And I thought, industrial consumables? Uh, wait a minute. And then I thought, oh, that's right. They've got a little business in abrasives, grinding wheels, sandpaper, and the like. That's probably what he's talking about. And I'm frantically trying to think, where have we got experience in, in abrasives and sandpaper? I'm coming up with nothing. We're a pretty small firm, and that's a pretty narrow vertical market, let me tell you. And I had all these things prepared to talk about our experience in industrial markets and marketing and compensation, sales force, and market segmentation and uh, synergy. And here I get hit with this question, deer in the headlights, what experience do you have in, in doing marketing studies for industrial consumables? What do you do in a moment like that? I was pretty sure the answer was nothing. Deer in the headlights, ah, what do you do? Well, I'm rapidly formulating all these ideas in my head to come up with a great answer. And suddenly my boss leans back into the conversation. And here's what he said in answer to that question. None that I can think of. What else do you want to talk about? Are you kidding? I want to crawl underneath the table. That's not what you say in those moments, right? But the client's reaction was instant and very evident. He leaned back, threw his arms open, and said, shoot, you'd be amazed. Hardly anybody's done anything in sandpaper marketing. What else you got that we could talk about? And suddenly the room relaxed. I realized I could talk about everything I was going to talk about before, but with 180 degrees of difference. Something changed in that moment. That story reveals quite a bit about the dynamics of trust and how trust works. But let me just highlight a couple things. Number one, my boss spoke the truth, straight up, plain and simple, unvarnished truth. We didn't have any experience. That was the truth. His pulse rate didn't even go up, whereas mine was through the roof. Second thing, there's a paradoxical quality to a lot of things in trust, and here's a good example of it. We spend so much of our lives focusing on expertise, competence, credentials, subject matter mastery, certainly what I focused on, and we think that's what creates trust. Well, here in this moment, the exact opposite, the willingness to say, I don't know, is probably far more credible than anything I could have said. Who's going to doubt you on that one? Right? It's highly believable. 